All right, joining us now, Senate Minority Whip, Senator John Thune. Sir, where do you stand on launching an impeachment inquiry? Well, Stuart, look, I think that you have to just follow the facts. And obviously, um, Congress has a role. It's an oversight role. And it's important that, that they, it performs that role. And if there are uh, irregularities, things that need to look into, they should look into it. So uh, I don't know where it all heads, but I will tell you this. I think that, you know, the Democrats used uh, weaponized impeachment uh, when they had the majority a couple of different times, and this is what happens. It, it turned about as fair play, and I, I hate to see impeachment getting weaponized and used in this fashion. I would rather that we change the direction of the country by winning elections, and that's what I'm going to be focused on. But uh, obviously, if there were, if there's wrongdoing, if there were laws that were broken, um, if there's something that reaches the threshold in the Constitution of high crimes and misdemeanors, I think you just have to follow the facts and see where they go. But uh, you know, at this point, you know, my view is uh, this is a very early on to make any judgments yeah. about whether or not they ought to move forward with any kind of a proceeding. Senator, we're approaching one year of Bidenomics and the Inflation Reduction Act. In your opinion, is it working? It's not. I mean, you know, when he came out and announced that Bidenomics is working, all of us were scratching our heads going, what part? You know, the 16.6 percent increase in inflation yep. since he's taken office, the $10,000 a year more that is costing families to just deal with their basic uh, living expenses, the fact that people's asset values have decreased by an average of 6 percent or $34,000 per family in this country. The economic data doesn't lie. And that's why I think even though the president is out there trying to put the best face on this, it's, uh, it's not working with the American people because they get it. Inflation's growing at a much faster rate than their wages are, and they're falling farther and farther behind. That's a simple math. But we did get a report today that the economy expanded at an annual rate in the second quarter of 2.4 percent. It's expanding a bit more rapidly. Uh, I'm not suggesting that Bidenomics is responsible for that, but it's going to weigh on the minds of voters. Well, look, you want to see the economy growing and expanding. You want to see good paying jobs being created out there. But it's going to be very hard, I think, Stuart, notwithstanding that, if you've got inflation increasing like it is, and now you've got the Fed just raised interest rates for the 11th time yesterday to the highest rate in 22 years. So people are seeing it on the inflation side. They're seeing it when they buy homes, when they buy cars, uh, all those sorts of things. And I think that's the reality most Americans are dealing with. We all wish well for the economy. We want to see the American people do well. But I think it's hard to see a scenario where more spending, uh, expansion of the regulatory state, higher inflation, higher interest rates actually leads anybody to a better place. Sir, I'm going to put some headlines on the screen about the heat wave, which actually they focus on climate change. Two items from the New York Times, one from The Economist. Parts of your state, South Dakota, are under a heat advisory too. Would you describe this as climate change? Well, I can say, I can tell you that it's hot in South Dakota in the summer. <laughs> That's just the, it's a reality that we live with. Um, I think we all ought to be doing what we can to reduce the, the carbon footprint in this country. And South Dakota actually sort of leads the way. 82% uh, of the energy generated in the state of South Dakota is renewable. It's hydro, it's wind. Uh, of course, we're very uh, a big state when it comes to biofuel. So uh, I think South Dakota is sort of leading the way and doing our part. But I, what I would tell you is I think that, you know, the, the climate seems to change. It does change through time. Uh, I do believe that on some level, at least, that human activity probably contributes to that. And we ought to do what we can to try and reduce that. But we ought to do it in a way that doesn't crush the economy and, uh, and, and, and really do great harm to, to people's daily lives. Senator Thune, thank you very much. For